said rear fanged and you can see she's a little bit annoyed there she just took a little tag she took a tag there to the GoPro and there she's using a tail to hook around don't bite me in the face that's off sides Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're in North Sumatra on a little island called Pulawe and I've been stuck here for the last two months during the corona crisis. It's been a bit of a blessing in disguise. I've been able to explore the island and find some cool species of snake like this guy to be able to show you guys back home. This is Ayatula Prasina. This is a species of colubrid native to Southern Asia and its common names are the Asian vine snake or the Oriental whip snake. And you can see why. It looks like a vine or a whip. They're primarily diurnal snakes, arboreal diurnal snakes, living in humid rainforests, in primary and secondary forests. And they're primarily active during the cooler parts of the day, early mornings and early afternoons, hunting for their prey. Um, at night, they tend to sleep on very thin branches when it's actually a lot easier to find these guys. Uh, they hang out on really thin branches and sleep at night and they actually shine quite nicely with a torch. I was lucky enough to find this guy during the day hanging around the yoga center nearby. Now, they're extremely slender bodied, elongated snakes uh, with very long pointed nose like you can see. And it varies, they vary from like a light brown to a gray to dullish yellows, greens, to this bright, vibrant color that you see here. Uh, they also have this beautiful white line that runs down the entire ventral side of its body. And as well as when they puff up their necks, they show the different blues and grays and black flecks between their scales. Really, really beautiful snake, a very elegant looking snake. Um, now this species uh, attains between around 1.5 to around 1.8 meters in length with a maximum of about two meters. They're one of the bigger um, Atula species and a really, really, really beautiful snake. You can see how she's got a prehensile tail here, which is holding onto my body. And she's just checking what I'm doing here and watching me <laughs> as I'm holding her. So Asian vine snakes are oviviparous, uh, meaning they give birth to live young or neonates. And um, they're born uh, little tiny carbon copies of their parents, except for the color. They're born more brown with yellow and black flecks and eventually reach adult coloration after a couple of months and a couple of sheds. So this is actually a display of an ontogenetic color change, uh, which changes with size, uh, vulnerability of different life stages, as well as habitat preference between adults and juveniles. They feed on different things, need different things at different parts of their life, and different colors benefit each stage. Um, this color change is also found in emerald tree pythons, uh, emerald uh, tree boas, green tree pythons, as well as boom slungs, uh, just to name a few of them. The snake has a very wide distribution around Asia, occurring from India all the way west to China and the Philippines, and then further south to Indonesia and Malaysia and surrounding islands. Um, they display quite a, a wide variety of color change from locality to locality. And this is one of the more beautiful ones, but I've heard certain areas, depending where they are, either deep forest or if they're a little bit closer to human habitations in secondary forest, it actually affects what color they come out, whether they're greens or whether they're yellows. So that's a really, really cool fact. Now, these Asian vine snakes feed primarily on small reptiles and amphibians, uh, particularly lizards and geckos and tree frogs, which are where they live pretty much in the same habitat as these guys. But they're also known to feed on small rodents and birds as well. Uh, there's one species of vine snakes here in Asia that actually specialize in feeding on fish and they hang out above streams 
and uh, they wait for fish where they use their binocular vision to be able to pinpoint a fish and grip it out the water. Very, very, very cool species of snake. Very cool genus of snakes. <laughs> Come look this way. There we go. So these guys have a very unique hunting method and as, as well as their eyes. Uh, a unique hunting method they use is extend their tongues which they use as a form of caudal luring and they'll stick it out because they blend in so well to the environment their prey items won't notice them they'll stick out their tongues and do a little bit of flicking which attracts prey because of the motion thinking it's an insect or a worm and that will lure in geckos or a bird or something of the sort at which point this guy will pluck them out um, they also use their tongues he's not doing it now but they'll use their tongues in a defense where they usually stick it out and they leave it out and if that doesn't work, then they do this typical S curl that you see happening now and they open their mouths. There's a couple of videos online, but this seems to be a more docile uh, individual and they, he's not striking too much. So he's just showing off his beautiful colors underneath. Ayatule is a genus of colubrid snake, commonly referred to as vine snakes or whip snakes. They're mildly venomous rear fang snakes, meaning that they have enlarged rear fangs in the top of their mouths. Um, which aren't actually fangs like in your normal venomous snakes. They don't actually have venom glands. Uh, their venom delivery system is very different than most other snakes and do not possess true venom glands. So a bite from these guys is not, not to be uh, worried about. They, like I said, rear fanged. And you can see she's a little bit annoyed there. She just took a little tag. She took a tag there to the GoPro. <laughs> And there she's using a tail to hook around. Don't bite me in the face, that's off sides. So like I said, they're rear fanged snakes and they've got grooved uh, fangs in the upper jaw, a little bit further back than most snakes do. And they don't have sophisticated venom glands. It's more of a secretion that they have and they use that through a Duvinov's gland where they secrete that secretion. And then once they bite into their prey items, they usually masticate or chew onto their prey to be able to deliver their venom instead of it actually being squeezed out of a venom gland. Hence rear fang snakes being a little bit less dangerous than your front fixed fang snakes, which are your elapids, which directly inject venom. So nothing to be worried about when you get bitten by a snake like this, not medically significant. If you were to let the snake bite and hold onto you for an extended period of time, you could get quite itchiness, a little bit of bruising, uh, maybe a, a mild headache, but again, it depends from person to person. Different people have different sensitivities and you don't want to maybe act up on um, anaphylaxis or you might be allergic to the venom. So it's always good to be wary and to be careful when you're handling any sort of snake. Vine snakes typically belong to the genre Ayatula, which are your Asian vine snakes, Oryx bellis, which is the New World vine snakes, and Telotornis, which is your African vine snakes. Now your African vine snakes, which inhabit sub-Saharan regions, are most diverse in East Africa. Um, there's five species of the New World vine snakes that range from Texas all the way down to Peru. And then Ayatula, which is the tropical Asian genus, made up of around eight species and one of these included. Ayatula is unique in having horizontal keyhole shaped pupil and longitudinal grooves that run down the front of its face. So I'm not going to try and point it out because it'll probably bite me. But you see these grooves that run down the front of its nose, which allow it to actually look down those grooves and give it ability to have acute binocular vision, which actually helps it when it hunts. These guys have the ability to pinpoint stationary prey items such as geckos and lizards, uh, even your draco lizards and tree frogs which might stay still for longer periods of time. These guys can actually pinpoint them, they'll do a very cool movement with their head where they move their head side to side and they're able to distinguish their prey items from let's say wood or a branch or whatever it might be and be able to strike them out whereas most species of snake need movement to be able to distinguish their prey items. So very, very cool adaptation, uh, amazingly looking eyes. Like I said, they've got keyhole pupil eyes, which run horizontally. 
very similar to your uh, African twig snakes, but this is a little bit more keyhole, whereas the African twig snakes is a little bit more elliptical. Um, really, really beautiful snake. First time for me to see these guys in the wild, and what a pleasure it is. This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful snake. This bright pointy head, and this beautiful flecking between its color, between its scales. You can actually see now it's sticking out its tongue and holding it out like I was talking about earlier. And that's a form of defense mechanism where it's sticking its tongue out like it is now, which is really, really cool, which it also uses in caudal luring. And you can see how strong this snake is in its arboreal nature, able to reach out for far items, probably hold up up to a third, three quarters of its body length, and to be able to stretch across branches. Let's see if it will reach over to the GoPro. Come on. You don't wanna. So a very, very cool species of snake. My first time seeing this guy in the wild, and what a pleasure it is. It's a really, really elegant and beautiful snake. Uh, but on that note, uh, I think it's time to release this guy back into the wild. So if you like this video, please do hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, and remember to stand for what we stand on. So it's time to release the snake back into the wild. This is exactly where I found her, in these beautiful vines here and she'll go right back home. Always a cool feeling getting these guys back to where they came from. So here we go. Off you go, my girl. There she goes.